I'm Barbara Rimkunis, and this is your Exeter History Minute. There are two ways to get across the river in downtown Exeter. The Great Bridge crosses at the Upper Falls, and String Bridge crosses at the bottom of the falls where the Exeter River meets the Squamscott River. Most of the time we use the Great Bridge, because it takes you right to Portsmouth Avenue, our main commercial road with all the supermarkets and gas stations. But there's some charm to using the other bridge, the String Bridge. We get asked a lot about the name. I mean, why is String Bridge? We'll get to that in a minute. First, let's look at a map. This is the 1802 map of Exeter, drafted by Phineas Merrill. It's our first accurate map of the town. He clearly labeled this as String Bridge. You can't really make out the island in the middle. It says ledges, but there was most likely some kind of solid ground there. You can also see that there are two dams. The first mill rights in town were granted to Thomas Wilson in 1640. He built a grist mill on the eastern side of the river. This sign commemorates Wilson's mill and it mentions Wilson's Creek. As far as I can tell, Wilson's Creek is the eastern channel of the Exeter River. It's possible that Wilson was the first person to put a bridge over the river. It would certainly have made it easier for his customers to carry their sacks of grain across to his mill. Later, Captain John Gilman was granted the right to put his grist mill on the western side of the river. At that time, he was allowed to erect a more substantial bridge. Charles Bell described it as nothing more than one or two timbers laid across each of the channels of the river with handrails at the side. The two main timbers were called stringers, which is why it's called String Bridge. Probably should be called Stringer Bridge. Although if you look at this 1845 map, you'll notice that it's actually two bridges connecting the center island to either shore. So if we really want to be accurate, maybe it should be Stringer Bridges. Whatever. It remained a narrow pedestrian bridge for over 100 years. The bridges you see on this map were actually built in 1817, when the bridge was widened to be one carriage width wide. This might be a photo of the 1817 bridge, although it's a bit hard to tell. It was taken before 1874, but it's a bit far away. In 1888, the town evaluated the bridge again and was found to be in poor condition. They intended to make repairs, but they wound up rebuilding both bridges. This is most likely the rebuilt bridge in this photo. You can still see the dam in this photo as well. In, in 1910, the two bridges were expanded to allow two carriages to pass by one another. Hooray! Makes you want to have a parade. The dams were removed about at the same time, and since then the water has flowed on either side of Kimball's Island. The current string bridge, Stringer Bridges, was built in 1935 of sturdy concrete, and that's the one that's there today, upgraded a bit in 2017. And that's the story of Exeter String Bridge. Never made of string. Two bridges, not one. Not nearly as exciting as it sounds. But then again, we could have wound up with Wilson's Bridge. Maybe we'll tackle some more of Exeter's exotic name places like Pickpocket Falls, Dogtown Road, or J.D. Hill. Why isn't it Shady Hill? What is a J.D. anyway? I don't know. But it is my job to find out. Stay tuned and visit our website at www.exeterhistory.org.